You know, thanks to vaccines, we really don't need these iron lungs anymore. So, the iron lung. It was a device manufactured to assist the breathing of patients afflicted with polio. And polio has a bit of a history in the United States, but I don't want to get into that right now. Maybe in a later video if you guys want, but suffice to say, it absolutely ruins your quality of life. Now, we don't see much of this crippling virus anymore, and that's because, well, in the United States at least, we eradicated it by utilizing vaccines. Somehow though, even with instances like polio, smallpox, measles, and other diseases that have been eradicated through the use of this medical breakthrough, there are still people today that argue against vaccination. In many cases, they flat out refuse to vaccinate their children from a variety of diseases, and we call these people anti-vaxxers. Let's start out with what a vaccine is. Vaccines are a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and help provide immunity to several diseases. They're made by taking the agent that causes a given disease, or a synthetic substitute, and introducing it in either a dead or weakened state into the body. Our bodies have a primary and secondary response to any agent entering it. The primary response identifies the agent and determines if it is or is not a threat, and if it is, to create antibodies to the infectious agent and destroy it. Problem is, infectious agents are sometimes strong enough to work incredibly fast, so even once our body is done analyzing and categorizing the threat through the primary response, by the time it creates antibodies, it can't produce them fast enough to effectively fight off a given disease. Once the body successfully fights off an infection, however, it does keep a log of what caused the problem, and if it ever analyzes that again, instead of creating a new database about this agent, it already has that data, and it just creates the antibodies again in a much faster rate. Think of it like making a mold for Jello. It takes a long time to make the mold, but once you have it, you can make Jello in that exact shape instantly at a moment's notice. The primary response builds the mold, and the secondary response uses the mold to make Jello, and that Jello fights off disease. Hashtag medical jello. Flavored by nuclear fruit. Just kidding. When we use vaccines, the situation is a little bit different. We introduce the infectious agent to the body in such an incredibly weak state that the body can take its time analyzing and categorizing the data and facilitate a proper defensive response. Without having to work against the clock like with a live virus, the body can smoothly enter the secondary response mode and use the mold it creates in the primary response to destroy the infective agent. When the body encounters the full powered final form of the same infective agent, it uses the mold it already has built to build a defensive antibody and destroy it. In short, vaccines prevent our bodies from having to make the uphill battle of fighting diseases, but they aren't magic cures, they just make the body operate better at using the tools it already has. Anti-vaxxers either don't understand this or simply don't care. But why? Well, our education system is bunk, as evidenced by the growing Flat Earth movement, so that's one problem, but is it perhaps a little deeper than that? Let's take a look at polio. Polio actually only affected a small portion of the United States population, but it was treated as an epidemic. People bought into the hysteria, vaccinations were developed and utilized, and over a generation or two, the polio virus was all but eradicated. Thing is, people are prone to hysteria for both good and bad reasons. Take a spokesperson like Alex Jones, repeatedly telling his viewers about the supposed efficacy of not vaccinating your children, and you'll soon have enough gullible schmucks posting anti-vax rhetoric on social media, and it gets gobbled up by people who simply don't know any better. The hysteria works both ways. And here's the thing. It's not just a modern issue. During the spread of smallpox in the mid-1800s, anti-vaccination movements began to prop up due to an aversion to the nature of how vaccines were implemented at the time. Without the aid of modern medical equipment, limps from blisters of people who had been vaccinated were inserted into scored flesh of an individual's arm, and if that wasn't graphic enough, the original vaccine came from the same blister limps of cows infected with the similar cowpox disease. In some cases, the clergy even objected to this practice because inserting any parts that came from an animal into the body was considered unethical from the biblical viewpoint from the pulpit. The point is that this isn't something new, and it's been going on for a long while. The difference between movements of older generations and now, though, is that with the advent of the internet and social media, bad ideas can propagate just as fast as good ones on a global scale. For instance, when someone tells you that they'd like to inject mercury into your child, if you don't know the whole story of how that mercury 
mercury is simply a marginal preservative and not actually the active ingredient, you would likely shriek out in protest about injecting a toxic chemical into your child's bloodstream and call the person who suggested it a moral monster. This is fundamentally no different than a person screaming about how they will never shove infected cow blisters into their child's arm due to it being gross and unethical. The concepts are the same, and in both, there's an omission of information that skews the point so far that it can go from misinformation to disinformation. There have almost always been anti-vax movements and controversies surrounding new and prominent vaccines, but why? There are a few arguments usually posited outside of the misinformation problem I gave before, and I'll try to present them in an argument and answer format for just a few minutes. Big Pharma makes tons of money off mandatory vaccines. It's unethical. Yes, there is money being made in the vaccination business, but the cost of a treatment doesn't change the necessity of that treatment. There is profit to be made in the food business, for instance, and you still need to buy food to survive. A company making profit is not in and of itself unethical. It's exploitative practices that are unethical. Vaccines cause autism. No, they don't. The 1998 study that concluded that has been flawed, and attempts to repeat the study were done in the early 2000s and found no evidence of a link between the two. Even if this were the case, if your argument is that you'd rather have a dead child than an autistic one, then there's an entirely different conversation that needs to be had. If everyone else is vaccinated, herd immunity will protect my child. This is only half true. If half the population carries this same mindset, then everyone else is no longer vaccinated, and herd immunity no longer applies, and there is nothing protecting your child. The vaccines don't guarantee protection. Why take them? You're right. They don't. But they are a bulwark. This argument is analogous to trying to make the case that a bulletproof vest won't guarantee protection in a firefight. You would still be an idiot to not bring the bulletproof vest. Taking too many shots weakens the immune system. As I've explained earlier, this is a myth when it comes to vaccines. Each shot actually increases the body's capacity to fend off attacks from various infective agents by essentially increasing the amount of data it has to work with. Natural immunity is stronger. We do not need vaccines. You're right, natural immunity is stronger, but not everybody has that. And you won't know you have that natural immunity until you're already affected anyways. And as someone who almost died to the flu virus, while other family members that contracted it at the same time did die, I can attest that finding out after the fact isn't exactly ideal. And honestly, there's so much more I could get into on this topic, but I really do think that Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic does a much better job in this particular area, and he's released a few videos on the subject, and I'll link them below for your viewing pleasure. I would highly suggest watching them after this. Hopefully I've argued my case against the anti-vax movement decently well here, and I'd love to hear your opinions in the comment section below. And speaking of comments, I did want to thank you all for your supportive comments on my last video about what recently happened in my family. They gave me the strength to record today in all honesty, so thank you. It means the world, trust me. With that said, everyone, the usual links will be in the description. Please check out my Discord and Patreon if you haven't already, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. As we move into the Patreon slides, as usual, insert end of video tagline here.